Not the prettiest performance tonight for the Toronto Blue Jays. However, they do get enough clutch hitting to beat the LA Angels 4-3. And the Jays have now won three consecutive games, and they're now 25-20 on the year. There are so many things you can dissect from this game. The lack of hitters, uh, hitting with runners in scoring position for the majority of this game. However, you did get some massive hits in the ball game from the Jays. So let's break this thing down right from the get-go, right? Alec Manoa on the hill for the Blue Jays. And he was decent. Gave up a couple solo bombs. But overall, the strikeout stuff was there for Manoa. And in the top half of the second inning, this is where the runners in scoring position problems occur. Uh, they begin here. And uh, runners in the corners, right? You get a leadoff double from Bo Bichette. Then Ryan Miltapia hits a single. <clears throat> and you got two on. Runners in the corners with nobody out here. This is a beautiful start. Then Alejandro Kirk then grounds into a double play. Bo does score. But it's a dead ground ball double play with runners in the corners and nobody out. So yeah, it does suck there. And then in the bottom half of the second inning, right? Velasquez hits a bloop single. And Rengifo comes in to score, and yet again, they score another run off a bloop snot shot single, and we're tied at one. And then in the bottom half of the third inning, Jared Walsh, I don't know how he hit this ball out of the ballpark, but it was a changeup down and out of the strike zone, and he crushes it to dead center field, and it is gone. A deep drive for Jared Walsh, and uh, the Angels got the lead. But I believe in the previous half inning, I can't remember what inning it was, the Jays had like, again, two on, right? You know, two on, nobody out, or two on, two, one out. And you're grounded to another double play, right? Just, you were just torturous with two big double plays early on in this ballgame. But then the top half of the fifth inning, things get a little interesting. Alejandro Kirk leads off with a double. Then, Rymel Tapia hits his single. So maybe Tapia didn't have that single in that uh, second inning uh, in the double play. I can't remember who got the single to uh, move Bo over to third. But either way. It was in the fifth inning that Tapia hit the bloop single. And, Gur and, and Kirk ends up at third base. So you got runners now on the corners with nobody out for Guriel. And we're sitting here like, man, can we get the clutch hit now? Guriel then pieces one up down the, th down the first baseline and he had a day, did Guriel. In comes Alejandro Kirk. Tapia goes to third. Guriel ends up at second. And you have second and third. Nobody out still. You have three consecutive hits. You've tied the game. The go-ahead run is 90 feet away. And you have another run standing at second base. Kevin Bijou then lines out to first base. He pieced it up hard. He was a Kevin, Kevin had a pretty good night tonight. He had a couple really good hits. One was a hit. And the other one was just a rip right at the guy. So I thought he had a pretty decent night did Kevin Bijou at the plate. And then George Springer pops up on the infield. And as Espinal strikes out... And second and third, nobody out in the tie game. You can't get any more to cross. And we're sitting here tied at two. And I'm like, damn, these are killing me. Two double plays. And then that big situation. Oh my God, this is making me go nuts. And then in the bottom half of the fifth inning, right? You, you score that run. You tie it up. You have a chance to take the lead. You do not. But in the bottom half of the fifth, Tyler Wade, solo bomb. And uh, then Mike Trout hits a ball on the third baseline, stays fair. Guriel fires in the second, miscommunication. Ball goes past second base. Trout ends, ends up a third with one out. Like, just a complete abomination. There were three errors in the game by the Jays as well. Defensively, not pretty. Tap, uh, on, that, um, uh, on that Velasquez single in the first inning, excuse me. Right, how did Rendifo get on base? Well, he got a single, but Tapia misplayed it, and the ball went underneath him. I mean, it's a simple play, and it went underneath him. He ends up at second base, so the blue single scores the run. You know, and then on that error there, Trout's end up at third base, and with less than two outs, we're like, man, this is absolutely brutal. Jays bring the infield in, and it's a ground ball up the middle, stopped by Bichette. He spins and fires home. I don't know why Mike Trout slid the way he did, because his body went right past home plate, and in comes his hand. Problem was, Kirk had enough time to bring that glove down on the hand. They initially call him safe. They review it. They overturn it. They call him out at the plate, and it keeps it a 3-2 game. So it's a massive out there for the Toronto Blue Jays. I don't know why Trout didn't go in feet first, like feet on the damn feet on the, on the plate. He went wide of it. I understand you want to be away from the tag, but you can make sure you touch on plate as soon as possible. But he didn't, and he got thrown out. And uh, in the top half of the seventh inning, right, again, the Jays have guys in scoring position, right? Zimmer at second. 
And uh, I runs at first and second, I believe, with one out. And they bring on Matt Chapman to pinch hit for Kevin Biggio. And Chapman rips one up the middle. It's knocked down by the infielder, but it goes by him just enough into the outfield. And Zimmer was running on the pitch. So it was a double, I don't know if it was double steal or if it was just Zimmer going to third. But at least Zimmer was off on the pitch. And with the line drive up the middle that gets bobbled, Zimmer comes around third and he slides in safely at the plate. The Jays have tied it at three here. This is fantastic. And then after a wild pitch from Ryan to pair, the Jays have runners at second and third with one out for Springer. Your chance to take the lead and he strikes out and then Espinal flies out to end the inning and we're like, oh my God, and again, they just cannot capitalize. This is killing me. However, they have gotten some clutch hits, right? The, 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 the Matt Chapman single, the Gurriel RBI double, right? So you are getting some clutch hits, but you have a chance to get so much more. And then the top of the ninth inning. With Alejandro Kirk on, because of an infield single, and then um, Bradley Zimmer then uh, bunts him over, which is a re was a really nice sack bunt from him. Guriel, Lourdes Guriel had a great night at the play. I know I said it earlier, but I'm going to say it again. He was phenomenal. Hitting to all fields on a line. You'll love to see it. He gets a ball in the outer half, and he pieces it up into right field for a base hit. Kirk ends up getting the third, but one Lagares bobbles it, and it goes past him and uh, goes far enough that Kirk comes around to score, and the Jays lead at 4-3. So, yes, did the Jays struggle mightily with runners in the scoring position at points during this game? Yeah, they did. However, they did get some clutch hits. The Chapman single, the Gurriel single, the Gurriel double. You'll take that for what it is. You did not home hit a home run, and you scored four runs, and you won the ball game. You did have 11 hits total. So it's not like the Jays were struggling that bad. However, Vladdy looked awful at the plate. Bo, other than the double that he hit, looked atrocious at the plate. It was, and Tail looked rough at the plate as well. He's had some really tough performances. However, Guriel, Matt Chapman got it done uh, in big moments. They, they, they got it done. And you got to remember, Jays fans, we're not facing a Baltimore Orioles right now. We're not expecting to win 10-1 every single game because, oh, our pitching, our starting pitching staff is really good and our offense is starting to break out. This and that, so we're supposed to beat every team's tail end. No, the Angels are a damn good team. They're a damn good squad. So you can't expect to go out there and, and just run through them every single night. I expected these type of tight ball games. Yesterday was kind of a luxury, winning that winning that ball game six to three. Today it was back and forth, back and forth, and they found a way so far in this series to keep Trout and Otani quiet. Now, obviously, that's going to change, right? Obviously, because those guys are too damn good to keep down for too long, right? But the Jays got it done. Romano came on, shut the door. The, the bullpen was great. Manoa didn't have his sharpest stuff today, but a lot of strikeouts, nine strikeouts over the six innings of work. However, did give up a couple home runs in the game. And um, obviously, the blue snot shots up there. I can't. I, I mean, both both hits in that second inning were blue snot shots that came around to score. So I'm not going to blame him for that. But the solo bomb to Jared Walsh again it was a pretty good pitch that that, that was just hit really well. And uh, Taylor, Taylor Wade, Tyler Wade, uh, he, that's your number nine hitter hitting the bomb. I don't care what kind of pitch it is that 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 can't happen. But no matter what, Manoa he was still good enough. Six innings, allowed seven hits, three runs, uh, only two were earned. And uh, nine strikeouts and did not walk a batter. Again, Manoa continues to pitch extremely well. Obviously, didn't have his quality, quality, quality stuff today. But really got a lot of swing and miss on that slider today. And I believe he struck out Mike Trout twice on the fastball. So he had some really nice stuff against some really big hitters in this game. So he, he had a nice outing, but not Manoa-esque from what we've seen so far this season. Jimmy Garcia was phenomenal. He was great yet again. He went a clean inning of work. No hits, no walks, no runs. Okay, just a clean job for him. Trevor Richards went out there. We're all kind of, we're not so sure about what we're going to get from Trevor Richards night in, night out. But he was really good. Had the changeup really working today. Went an inning, allowed no hits, no runs, no walks. A couple strikeouts for Trevor Richards and then Jordan Romano. We talked about it yesterday. I, I didn't know if he would be available today because of the 20 plus pitches yesterday and it being May. I don't didn't really know how, how they were going to play that out. But in a 4-3 game, they, they chose to put him out there. And we know for sure he's not going to be going tomorrow. Three days three days in a row at this early point in the season, you're just not going to see. You'll probably see Adam Simber in that situation tomorrow if, if it comes to that. But Romano comes in there and strikes out the side. So, yeah, he definitely had the stuff today. He was really, really good tonight in a 4-3 game and did strike out Shohei Otani to end the ball game. He came on to pinch hit in this one, all right? Offensively, Alejandro Kirk had a great night at the plate. Went two for four in the game, scored two of the four runs that Jay scored. He had the infield single and then the double off the uh, right center field wall. He was very, very good. And Lourdes Gurriel Jr., a guy that's been struggling mightily with runners in scoring position and just in general. 
goes three for four today with two big time knocks with runners in scoring position. Three for four in the game for Gurriel in the eight hole. But you know what? I, I kind of like having him down there in the eight hole just for the fact that you get down to that lineup and you're like, okay, Gurriel's up. Oh, wait, we have one guy, then we're at the top of the lineup again. Like, this is fantastic. Now, albeit I want him in bigger situations, but he did a really nice job tonight. 11 hits total for the Blue Jays, seven strikeouts total for the Toronto Blue Jays, including three in one inning against, I think it was like Oliver guy, and the Jays, I mean, my God, Teo, Vladdy, and Bo looked absolutely horrendous uh, on every single one of those at-bats against that, I think it was, I think it was Oliver. Uh, it was bad. But... The Jays won the game 4-3. They've won the first two games of the four games set against the Angels. And hey, all you have to do is win one more of the next two games. Um, and you've won, you've won three of four against the Angels in Anaheim. I mean, it's going to be a great, great time. Jays fans, one more, one more late game tomorrow night. It says 10-07, but it might switch to 9-38 because it said 10-07 for today's game. And it did start at 9-38. So I don't know what will happen. First pitch tomorrow. Yusei Kikuchi gets the ball for the Jays and Michael Lorenzen gets the ball for the Angels in the game three of the four game set there tomorrow uh, tomorrow night. And for Yusei Kikuchi, as we've always talked about, throw strikes. That's all I'm going to say. All right. You know what, guys? That is going to do it for this one. If you enjoyed the video and enjoyed the game this evening because, oh, it was, uh, it was entertaining. You know, pulling your hair out because you're angry. But also jacked up because you're happy. It was a mix of everything today. Smack the like button if you guys enjoyed this one. Hit the subscribe button if you guys not already. Comment down below. Thoughts on the video. Thoughts on the game. Would you like? Would you not like from today's game for the Toronto Blue Jays? The Twitter link is down below. So follow up. Send me a DM. Do all that great stuff. The Instagram link is also down below. So follow up there if you guys have not done so already. And I will talk to you guys. Jays edition as we've talked about. Game three. The four game set against the Angels. Goes tomorrow night, 10 7 first pitch there. Yusei Kikuchi versus Michael Lorenzen in Angel Stadium. In, oh, no, at Angel Stadium in Anaheim, California. All right, Jay's looking for win number four in a row. I mean, I don't know. Let's see if the offense keep going. Let's see if we can get some early offense and get a nice little lead built early. We'll have to see that Michael Lorenzen put up some pretty good numbers so far this year. So we'll see how it all plays out, though, guys. Thank you so much for listening and watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and the game tonight. We'll talk to you guys then.